and it's time for another men's coffee group discussion. And joining the panel today, welcome back to John Cowan and Carl McDonald. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of how to communicate effectively. So, <laughs> let's do this effectively. <laughs> what is, John, effective communication? It's when you can get across not just information, but you're also doing something which is going to enhance the relationship because you can get facts across but leave people so resistant to you that they don't take on board what you're trying to say. And how would you explain it? Yeah, I think it's, it's communication that attends to the relationship, kind of like John was saying. It's about the connection, particularly in intimate relationships. It's yeah. often about giving the other person the experience of being heard and understood as well as actually listening to the information. And there is a lot of different ways to communicate, isn't there, Carl? Yeah, there sure is. And I mean, I think one of the you know, stereotypes with blokes, of course, is we want to fix it and we want to, we want to do things. But actually, there's some value to that. You know, functional validation of actually doing things that demonstrate caring, making a cup of coffee, making the bed, uh, helping our partner out is also communication too and shouldn't be undervalued. And I guess body language as well plays a part on it, John? Yes, one of the big things that men sometimes unintentionally communicate is with by their silence yes. or by their withdrawing or their uh, distraction. Or their grunting. Know, their grunting. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. shrugging. We <laughs> shrug a lot of right, right, well, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. mind you, uh, people that know us well usually get to read those, sometimes read them too well. Mm. Yes. Facebook and texting plays a part in this as well. I guess it adds another layer of complexity to communication. Yeah, it does. I often think it, it has its place because it mm. can be useful if it's really hard to say something face to face. Mm. But generally speaking, I think text message should be avoided in relationships because it, it, it can be too easily misunderstood uh, and things quickly spiral into arguments. But then again, for an introvert, it can be an incredible boon, the fact that they can actually think, pause, polish up their communication. Young people tend to like their on, online self better than their real self mm. because they can come across so much better. So it can be a real boon, especially for shy and introverted kids. And I know, I mean, probably an example is when you go to send a text sometimes, you actually, you know, you reread it, you think about what you're saying a few times, so you get it right. Oh, I wish I did. I just send, <laughs> I send it off of all the typos and, and a misconstru uh, easily misconstruable message, yeah. Is it instinctive for men to communicate well? Is it in their genes? Is it in their blood? I think men communicate with other men instinctively well, but mm. when it comes to cross-cultural communication, and I would include talking to another gender in that, uh, sometimes we don't. We sometimes get our words crossed up, and the meaning doesn't get through. And it can cause a lot of issues, can't it? It can, but I think a lot of it comes down to role modelling. You know, we, 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 we do what we've seen done by our, our fathers and how our parents communicated with each other. But I think it can be very simple. And, you know, one of the things I often talk to men about um, is just that it can be as simple as just validating, which is just sending the message that I understand that that's how you feel um, and that that has a real value. It, it, it's a very simple skill to learn and without doubt probably the most effective relationship skill you can actually learn. Mm. What else should we be working on, John? Oh, let, just letting that other person know that you've really heard them. Right. In fact, if, especially if you've got some difference of opinion. Well, I was just going to say yeah. that, because what if you do have a different opinion? Find as much that you can agree on before moving on to the disagreeable. Okay. You know, okay, I think we good. can agree that we're both wanting to achieve such and such, and then once you sort of say that you're on the same side wanting to solve a problem, then you can move forward to actually meeting some some solution. So taking a step back and not mansplaining is a good move? Yeah, slowing down and taking space. I think mm. one of the most useful things you can do in a conflict is stop thinking in your own head how you're going to reply while you're trying to listen and actually just listen and really make sure you've heard and understood the other person's point of view before you start putting your own point of view across. And this, I guess, comes down to communicating with your kids, communicating with your boss, not just your partner. Yeah. Yeah, talking to bosses is interesting uh, in that uh, sometimes you just do have to just know, nod and go, yes, boss, yes, boss, yes, boss. But a, a follow-up email where you say, I, you know, just, I just want to get this clear. I heard you say this and this and this. I've got a few ideas on this if you'd like me to, to share them. And that way, uh, that can sometimes really help. So don't raise your voice. <laughs> don't get angry. <laughs> yes, and slowing down. You know, I think a lot of times once we get into conflict, we can feel like we need to solve everything now. It's mm. okay to step away, take some time to consider, cool down, and strike when the iron's cold. Right, yeah. strike when the iron's cold. I like mm. that. What if you feel like you're not actually being heard? How do you deal with that one? I think a great strategy is to actually ask the person to check out what is it that you've actually heard me say so mm. I can make sure oh, yeah, you're understanding yeah. me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in relationships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the whole idea of taking the idea of a, a competition to win out of the, out of the 
dialogue can really, really help because you can win, you can win a battle but lose a relationship and what's, what, what's more important. Okay, and last piece of advice for effective communication. Validate, validate, validate. If you do nothing else, just validate the emotions mm. and keep listening. Yeah. And being listened to is so much like being loved, most people can't tell the difference. So one of the most loving things you can say to someone is just, mmm, with a slightly constipated look on your face. <laughs> and it's just going to be so, you know, it can be really, really effective. Brilliant. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Always a pleasure. John and Carl, always here for the men's panel, which is great. And if you have any topics for our men's panel, just message us on our Facebook page.